Hi. Now, here we've got a typical question where we've got to decide what distribution we are dealing with. And I'll just read it back to you. We've got the probability of a telesales representative making a sale on a customer call is 0.15. And we've got two questions here to answer. We've got to find the probability that no sales are made in 10 calls and in part B, more than three sales are made in 20 calls. So what kind of distribution then have we got here? Well, it's going to be a binomial model because we've got a finite number of trials, 10 in the first case and 20 in the second case. And there are always two outcomes. We can either have success, that's making a sale is 0.15, or a failure, not making a sale. And probabilities remain constant, and I'm assuming that they're independent of one another. So if that's the case then, we should be familiar with the binomial model. We should know then that if x is a random variable that is distributed binomially, it has two parameters, n the number of trials, and p the probability of success. And it can be shown that the probability that x equals r successes is equal to n c r multiplied by p to the power r and the probability of failure, which is 1 minus p, or we call it q, to the power n minus r. This is something that you should be familiar with. If not, you can always check out this formula on my website under the binomial distribution where I go into a lot more detail on this. So I'm assuming that you're fairly familiar with this then. So for part A, we need to define our random variable. And so I'm going to say, let x be the random variable, number of sales made, where x is distributed binomially, n we know is 10, and the probability of success making a sale is 0.15. So that would mean that therefore, the probability of making no sales, that's x equaling zero, is going to be equal to, by the formula here, 10 C0, okay, multiplied by 0.15, our p-value, to the power zero, multiplied by the probability of failure, one minus p, we often call it q as I mentioned earlier, so that's gonna be 0.15, and that's to the power n minus r. So it's going to be to the power 10. The 10 C0 is 1. 0.15 to the power 0 is 1. So really this is exactly the same as just working out 0.85 to the power 10. And if you work that out, you end up with 0.19687 and so on. So if you're to round this, say, to three significant figures, it would be 0.197 to 3SF. Now, this is the way that you could do it through a formula, but you don't have to do it this way. You could use tables, which is really the way I'd recommend for something like this, because if you look up in your tables, and I've just taken an extract here, your cumulative binomial distribution tables you'll find that if you look under p equaling 0.15 and then n equaling 10, if you look along the top row where x equals 0, you'll see under 0 0.15, 0 0.1969. Now this is the probability that x is less than or equal to 0. Well, that's going to be exactly the same to the probability that x is equal to 0. So you could use that value there then, okay? And you can see how that is very similar to this one. So whatever you do anyway, it's going to be 0 0.1973 to three significant figures. So that's part A. Now let's just move on to the next part, part B. Now in part B, we'll mark that as A up there, but in part B, we've got to work out now that more than three sales are made in the 20 calls. So again, we can define this by a random variable x, only we've just got to change 
the value of n to 20. So we've got our random variable x defined as the number of cells made where x is a binomial 20 0.15 and we want more than three cells so we're looking for the probability okay that x is greater than three and to work something out like this I certainly don't want to do four, five, six, all the way up to 20 and calculate them using this formula here. Now I want to work it out as one because that'd be all the probabilities minus the probability that X is less than or equal to three. Now I could work this out as the probability X equals naught plus the probability X equals one plus the probability X equals two plus the probability X equals three by working through this formula. But that seems a bit silly when we've got cumulative binomial distribution tables which give us the probability of being less than or equal to a particular number. So why don't we use those? So all we've got to do is take a set of tables. Now I've got one here where I've got an extract from it. Look for p equaling 0.15 where you see n is 20. And then you'd look down the X row here and you'll see three. And then alongside the three, you should find 0 0.6477. That gives us the probability that X is less than or equal to three. So it saves us working out all the individual probabilities. So we've got one minus 0 0.6477. And if you work that out, you end up with 0.3523. Okay, and I would round that up really to three significant figures. So I've got 0.352 to 3SF, but that's up to you. All right. Okay, well, that's basically how I would do these two parts to that question.